Hi everyone, welcome to my channel um, where we talk all about aesthetics, skincare, and education. My name is Dr. Anya Weissman and today's topic is the Clear and Brilliant Laser. Those of you that follow me know that I recently acquired this laser. I've wanted it for a really long time. So I'm really happy to have it. I want to explain to you why I wanted it so much, why I'm so happy I got it, how I use it, how it works, and if it's something that you should consider doing. So if you're interested in that, please like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share with a friend, and let's get into it. In this video, I will also compare to the Fraxel and the Moxie, which are kind of in the same, they're different, Moxie is a different brand, but they're kind of in the same family. So we'll just go through and compare the three lasers. But to start with, the Clear and Brilliant is a light resurfacing laser that has two hand pieces. So in a way, it's two different lasers that work differently. One hand piece is called the original and it's a 1440 nanometer wavelength and it's used to resurface the skin but so lightly that there's minimal downtime and depending on how the laser is set you can have no downtime at all or you can have the feeling and appearance of a sunburn for 12 to 18 hours and usually by the next day you're no longer red you might feel a sandpaper texture to your skin which washes off in about five days on its own and then your skin is glowing which is one of the benefits so what are the other benefits a resurfacing laser as the name implies will resurface your skin so it shrinks pores it stimulates collagen it um it primarily targets tone and texture, and it can also treat very mild acne scarring. It wouldn't be my first choice uh, for a laser treatment for acne scarring because it, it is so light, but again, for mild acne scarring. This particular laser doesn't disrupt the stratum corneum or the very superficial part of the skin, but it penetrates through the epidermis into the dermis. Depending on the settings, it can go as deep as 0.38 millimeters, so 380 micrometers in depth. The second hand piece, the 1927 Permea hand piece, it penetrates the skin 0.17 millimeters or 170 micrometers. So it's designed to be more shallow. It primarily works in the epidermis. The beam is wider, so it affects a larger piece of microscopic piece of skin and it disrupts the stratum corneum, the superficial most layer. And so through that disruption, you actually get improved skincare penetration. You also get a resurfacing of the epidermis. So if you have pigment in the epidermis, it works really, really well to help lift that pigment out. Although the chromophore or the, the target of both hand pieces is actually water but it's just the way the laser is designed that determines how deep it goes how wide it is and how it works so the 1927 permea is great for freckles for lentigos pigmentation basically evens out skin tone the permea hand piece improves absorption of skincare so it really does increase the permeability of the skin. So if you're going to use targeted skincare, the best time to use it is after the laser. Okay, so just to show you, if you're interested in a slide form, I'll put up a slide that shows what the beam looks like from the 1440 handpiece, which is the resurfacing handpiece. And you'll notice the area that has more of that pink tone is kind of a cone shape and it actually goes from the epidermis down into the dermis. Whereas if you look at the slide from a treatment from the Permea hand piece, it shows that the red line, the lesion that's created is wider, but it's also more shallow. And then you can see the, the kind of the flake, it almost looks like a puff pastry, the flakiness on top of the skin is that stratum corneum that's disrupted. So it's a different mechanism of action, different width, different depth. 
Now, in terms of getting a treatment and who to go to and who should do the service, there are a few things that you can look for to help guide you and help you read whether that's a good place and the providers uh, do the laser treatments well. So this system has something called an optical tracking mechanism. And what that means is the actual laser device pays attention that the laser is perpendicular to the skin and it makes a good contact with the skin because that determines that the dose of laser energy delivered to the skin is exactly as it should be, no less than that. And the laser lets the provider know if the contact with the skin is satisfactory in multiple ways. Number one, with the noises that it generates, it beeps in different ways and the beeps, some mean that there's energy going in and other beeps mean you've lost contact with the skin. And the other way that the laser communicates with the provider is that the handpiece actually has different colors. And if the contact is good, the color at the end of the handpiece is blue. And if the contact is suboptimal, then the laser light turns red. So the laser guides the provider in terms of how to do the treatment. Now the provider may or may not take the information from the laser and adjust the technique, but that is one thing that you can look out for. Another element is how fast the handpiece is moved over the skin. You can't move too fast. It has to be, it literally has to be just right. And that's hard for a patient to assess when they're looking at a treatment. But again, if the handpiece is moving too fast across the skin, the laser does beep and let you know you're moving too fast. So those are some of the signs that you can look for to see how providers are using the lasers and if they're good quality. So when you're shopping around and you find great deals and you wonder why pay more, what you should be paying more for is that attention to detail to make sure that the treatment is actually done at the right speed with proper contact to the skin, proper number of passes so they don't take shortcuts, they don't, for instance, under treat you. There's all these little things that are so hard to pick up on when you're shopping for a provider. But that's why I'm not a fan of going to places that are just gonna give you the greatest deal because they're probably not gonna give you the greatest treatment. Now let's compare the Clear and Brilliant to the Moxie to the Fraxel. I put them in that order in terms of strength, but it's a little bit apples and oranges. The Clear and Brilliant is a diode laser and we're only gonna be comparing the 1927 wavelength because the Clear and Brilliant has it, that's what Moxie is, and Fraxel has it. Fraxel also, it's called Dual because it also has another energy that's 1550. We're not, that's much, much stronger and we, that's all we need to say about it. But let's talk about that 1927 wavelength. Both the Clear and Brilliant and the Moxie are diode lasers. So it means they're the same family. So when we compare the settings, we're really comparing apples and apples. We're even comparing like Granny Smith to Granny Smith. They're the same. Whereas the Fraxel is a thulium. It's a different type of laser. So really the only thing it has in common with the others is that it's the same wavelength of light, 1927 nanometers, but it actually is a different kind of laser. Still, they do treat and target similar concerns. So when we look at the clear and brilliant, the maximum energy, maximum energy it can deliver is five millijoules. Now, even if you don't know what millijoules are, just remember number five. Moxie is between five and 10. So it can be as gentle as the highest setting on clear and brilliant, or it can be twice as strong. And Fraxel, the minimum, minimum energy is 20 millijoules. So it's four times higher than clear and brilliant at the minimum. That's why Fraxel has, you have to be very careful about skin tones, the darker Fitzpatrick's, you may not want to use Fraxel because just the lowest dose is still very, very strong. Now, next up, let's talk about the maximum coverage. 
if we imagine we have a hundred sites where the laser could penetrate and the laser light goes through the skin and creates that photothermal injury, we have a hundred potential spots. And the laser, when it's called fractional or fractionated, that means it doesn't actually treat every single spots of those hundred because then your whole face would be treated every part of your skin would be treated, that's like a full burn and your face would fall off. So fractionated means you take an area of skin and you just treat a percentage of it. So if you imagine a hundred spots you could treat and you only treat six, that's six percent. So with that in mind, the maximum coverage with Clear and Brilliant is 6.3 percent, meaning if you do a full proper treatment and you look at the skin, you've treated 6.3% of that skin. If you look at Moxie, it's five to 10%. So there's a range and it can be less than clear and brilliant or it can be up to 10, so more than clear and brilliant. And Fraxel is a minimum of 20%. That's why Fraxel has downtime. You treat the skin with a much stronger energy, a stronger laser, and more surface area on the face. That's the comparison between the three. So Moxie is kind of in between. At, the, at its weakest settings, it's like a clear and brilliant. At its strongest settings, it's still nowhere near a Fraxel. So which one of the three to get? Well, number one, it does depend on your skin type. If you have dark skin, clear and brilliant will be safe to use on your skin. The other thing to consider is how much downtime do you want? Do you want just a quick treatment where you have no downtime or a little bit of redness? and you're getting improved skin tone and you're getting a glow and your pores are shrinking, but no one around really sees any downtime and they don't even know you're doing a laser treatment. Or do you wanna go in for a Fraxel and you're going to get the, the brown little grid marks on your face for five days before they slough off and you're going to have that downtime, but because it's a stronger laser, you will have a more pronounced result. In general, you can think of four clear and brilliant treatments equivalent to about one Fraxel treatment. So it's really just dependent on lifestyle, on budget and on skin tone. That's all I've got for you on Clear and Brilliant and comparing it to the other two, I hope that you found this helpful. If you have any more questions, leave them down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.